Welcome to A Lunch with Biggie, a podcast about small business and creatives sharing their stories and inspiring you. My guest today is someone who I really admire and I consider, consider pretty much to be the sandwich queen of Orlando. She's the owner of Pom Pom's Tea House and Sandwicheria. Basically, it's an East meets West themed um, gourmet sandwich shop that also offers a wide variety of loose leaf teas. Please welcome my friend Pom Moon Gaklang. So, so Pom, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with me about. Um, I really just wanted to just kind of, I'm so inspired by your story and everything that you, you know, based on our history, because I've known you for so long. And I just really wanted to just take a few moments or a little bit of my lunch break, basically, to kind of be able to chat with you um, and just kind of have people hear your story. Um, I think it's very inspirational, but I also think it's amazing because of everything that you've kind of overcome and um, and everything that you've done and, and basically how it's also grown so much. Um, so I know right off the bat, you know, obviously you're a trained pastry chef, um, you know, who worked at really highly acclaimed uh, restaurants like Nobu and Lucky Chang's in New York. How did you go from, you know, obviously coming from New York and then decide to come back to Orlando to actually start, you know, I guess a venture because obviously pom poms was not, I don't believe pom poms was the first um, the first venture. So tell people a little bit about your story and where you came about and how we came about to now to pom poms. Um, when I was living in New York, my family they lived in Orlando and they own a few Thai restaurants and I definitely knew early on in life that I did not want to be your water and rice girl for the rest of my life. <laughs> I wanted to do something more. I was such a rebellion. So moved to New York, went to school, came back. I, I actually came back two days prior to 9-11. Really? Yep. Yep. I moved out of the city. I just, it wasn't for me anymore. So came back here. Um, and at that time, you know, I was just figuring things out. I, I had a pastry degree, and I tried applying at Swan and Dolphin. I didn't get the job, um, and that kind of really, that hurt me. Like, wow, you know, I, I lived in New York. I went to school. I worked at these great places. Why didn't I get hired? It just always stuck with me. Yeah. So as they say, when one door closes, a window opens. Well, that's crap. That's, that's such crap <laughs> because I waited and waited and I, I had to work back at my family's restaurant being the rice and water girl, which was fine. And then there's this opportunity that came up. Um, the Thai government was opening up uh, a huge, a, a huge Thai restaurant out on I Drive and they wanted me to go in as a GM. I turned them down three times. Because I was like, I don't want, I didn't want to, it was just so conforming to who and what I was. But after turning them down three times, fourth time was a charm. So I said, you know what, let me just be stupid. Let me just tell them these crazy things that I demand, I wanted, I needed. They gave it to me. <laughs> so, the, oh, you know, the worst thing is when someone says yes be prepared. It's not no. I learned that at an early age in my career. So the worst thing is yes. And worked there after my contract was done. I, it was time for me to figure out what I wanted to do because I couldn't go, keep going back to my family's. That wasn't nice. That It just didn't look good and I didn't feel good about that. So the whole concept of Pom Pom's Tea House was really the sandwich part was an inspiration. When I worked up in New York, the only thing we wanted to do was go next door to the deli and get a sandwich. And we would just talk about who came in and what celebrities we served. And, you know, it was just, it was really, this is such a big industry based um, restaurant. And I, I, I always want to keep it that way. Yeah. You no, know, I, I, and I think to me, that's one of my favorites is the fact that you guys, that would be like the late night activity. And it's also one of the reasons actually why you have your hours. You actually do a Saturday. Your Saturdays are open. You're pretty much open 24 hours for that reason is because you want to be able to give not only to the community, but also to the service industry yeah. to have that opportunity to be able to come in and yeah. do that. 
Um, one of the things that I've read, and, and I'm kind of curious on how did you go about with the loose, like the, what made you decide to go like, I want to do loose leaf teas. Like, how did you come about that? And then what about the menu? I've read some things that like the menu was inspired obviously by your time and work in New York. Um, you know, cause you're everyone like, you know, everyone thinks of the traditional sandwich, like, Oh, a Turkey sandwich. This is not, we're not talking like, you know, regular, <laughs> you know, mom, mom making you a sandwich. Like we're talking like, like, a, 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 like a formula a melding of flavors coming in to do this and and that's one of the things that i kind of want you to be able to kind of tell little people about it because it is different orlando did not did not know about something like this um you know especially in in the milk district yeah 15 years ago it was it was um you know you weren't seeing brie on the menu anywhere for sandwiches unless you're at the Ritz Carlton or something. And I was just like, well, that's very passe. You know, it, I just thought more of us, like it, it could be obtainable. Um, the first year I opened was probably the toughest year. Cause I didn't think that I could make it. Um, maybe it was just too advanced. I, I just don't know, but we almost closed the doors down in a year, but then it took it. We had two customers that came in and they came in faithfully. When I say faithfully, they came in five days a week. They did this for two months and they brought more and more and more people. And that's how this started. I feel that I, I, I well not feel, but I know that I didn't have money for at that time. The Orlando Weekly was, you know, it, it was, it was uh, prestigious to be able to pay for an ad, I guess. And I couldn't afford that. So I gave the savings that I would have to customers. So it's guerrilla marketing is what I call it. Straight in your face, here it is. Um, I've had a few sandwiches been, you know, thrown in my face because I didn't have American cheese or lettuce. At that time, I was doing watercress or arugula. Yo, and I think to me, that's one of those where, do you think that, and I, and I was thinking about this last night when I was trying to like, as I was prepping, do you think, the beginning of this process, I mean, obviously no one's ever prepared for what happened with the pandemic, but do you think the, the, the kind of like the, I'm not going to give up, I'm going to figure out ways was that, you know, that's definitely one of the areas I think that maybe kind of helped going into the pandemic on kind of bringing you back. I mean, 15 years, you doing this, um, doing this. And the fact that you're like, and I, I'm always, I've always loved that story about the fact that you had, you know, you were at a place where, you know, people didn't, you know, cause I mean, I'll be honest. I came, when I first came to pom poms, I came to pom poms because I had read about it and I had just finished going. It was a date night with my wife and we went to a maroon, a maroon five concert ah. and it was late and I was hungry and I was like, man, I am hungry. I want something, you know, you always, always hungry after you go out some, mm -hmm. like, you know, downtown or whatever. And I told my wife and I, and I was like, oh, I'm like, there's this place I heard about. I don't know. I'm like, I don't know. We'll see. I'm like, I've heard good things. Let's go. And she and I went and we were hooked. And it was one of those where, I mean, the, it's definitely, I would definitely say it was, it's colorful. It's, it's eclectic. I would say it's eclectic. Um, at the time, I kind of really, to be honest, I didn't know if I fit in. Um, just because of the way the, the, was, I felt like I was like, well, I'm not, I'm not cool enough. Like oh, no. that's literally how I felt. I'm not oh. cool enough. Now I will tell you, I've been coming here for, <laughs> for I would probably say maybe a decade now, um, and I will tell you that that's one of my favorite things about your your place is the fact that you come in here and you see everybody, all types of people, yeah. um, from hipsters to the moms, you know, mom clubs to you know city officials. Yeah. You see them all here and. I think it's because of the welcoming and also obviously the great food that you have. Um, you know, so what are, what do you think is some of your recipes for success? Diversity. You know, we, I don't, I, to me, this is a place of welcoming for everybody. It's, it's not just one, you know, one sided, um, an adventurous eater. This is, um, you know, you look on the outside, it's very reminiscent of New York. It looks really shitty on the outside, but then you walk in, it's like, whoa, <laughs> what is this? And I, I like that aspect. So, you know, don't be fooled by the cover, you know. Uh, 
We've been doing this for 15 years, and a lot of it has to do with my staff. Um, I do like to hire diverse staff. I feel that my clients are diverse, so you can have a conversation with any of them. They're, they're, it's just all walks of life comes through this door, and all walks of life work with me, and I, I love it. I love the diversity of it. So, obviously, I need to talk. I need to know... I'm very, I'm very intrigued, and it's one of those things. And I, and I'm not expecting you to give me trade secrets. I just want to know somewhat of the story, or at least how you came about. Because so there is definitely a science, and we'll talk about this um, on this aspect. How I love because you really are kind of like a Willy Wonka of flavors when it comes to sandwiches. Um, but one of the things that I absolutely love, and I always tell people about it, um, is you have like basically like a wall, a bookshelf of bread. And that bread gets delivered pretty much, I think, almost every day. The You also are diehard when it comes to supporting local small businesses. I could tell you that the bread is not local, not to, that there's not great bakers around. But my question to you is this. How did you come about finding your baker? I don't want to know who your baker is. I don't want to know any of those trade secrets. I just want to know how you came about it. Was it something that you got from New York? Is it like, and why you chose this bread? Because I think that's the other thing that I love about knowing about the bread. The bread was, um, the bread took the longest for me to decide on what company I was going to take in. Um, we're doing the press sandwiches and not all sandwiches can be pressed properly now if you press it it'll crack and then fall apart or um you know we literally during covid we changed our bread for two months during covid to something that was i guess more higher end zero preservatives and it tastes so good but it couldn't withstand the press um this bread here it's dense it's 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 moist but dense and I can't even explain it. It's you look at it. It's definitely something that you just you can't take it home to make a sandwich because it's too much bread. You have to press it. It's or make a French toast out of it, but it's just not one of those sandwiches that oh let me just go into the fridge and make a sandwich. Would you say it's like the 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 thickness of like a Texas toast? Maybe something to that effect. It is like a texas toast but more dense mm-hmm. it's i think that texas toast is light cloudy puffy lovely this is just rock solid yeah and the thing is we're not just talking like white we're talking like pumpernickel we're talking wheat what other am i missing another Rye, one and Ra- it's a sourdough that we use all of them are, are absolutely amazing and i will t- and i will tell you that for me as a sandwich eater, I love it because of, for many reasons. One, they're very hearty sandwiches. So sometimes you can't finish it and you need to take it home. And the beauty of it is when you take it home, you actually can reheat it because it's not like you're like, you know, your mom's like the wonder slice bread. This is like stuff will hold up. So therefore you can actually put it on a cast iron pan and actually cook it. Um, and so for me, that was something that I found to be amazing because I believe and and it obviously I'm, I'll, I'm going re- to kind of go into this, I guess, transition is what do you think is like a key element to making a good sandwich when you're, you know, I guess we'll go, we'll leave it at that. Um, funny you should say that because if I give you the same five ingredients and I use the same five ingredients, it'll be a totally different sandwich and the integrity of it the next day, you know, mine might be soggy and yours won't. It, it really is the build. And I, I'm very strict on that here. There's a reason for everything. If you're going to put, if you're going to put tomatoes right up against the bread of course, it's going to be soggy the next day. So uh, there's a science to it. And um, yeah, it's good. It's a good science here. And that's something that I actually was going to bring up because obviously I'm, I have a, you know, one, one of my loves, or one of the things is that you've actually accom- allowed me to accomplish one of my goals that I've always wanted. And that's to have either A, create a sandwich at a restaurant or be able to A, inspire a theory or a concept of a sandwich at a restaurant. And one of the concepts when we did Gouda Micha, mm-hmm. 
I literally was, it was literally like being um, kind of like, you know, just like using the Willy Wonka concept, going behind the curtain and being able to have that time with you um, and assembling and just being able to understand and hear because this is when you start realizing that like, like I am, you know, and, and nothing, nothing against those that are home chefs. But this is when you start realizing, this is when you start separating the, you know, like who knows what they're talking about, who's making quality and who's just making stuff. Because when, as we were talking, you would tell me, because in this Gouda Micha sandwich, um, I was, Pom asked me, she's like, hey, I want you to kind of come up with a sandwich. And I wanted something different than what's on the menu. Um, but I also wanted something really meaty. And so I knew I wanted Gouda and I knew I wanted it to be one of the media sandwiches. So I told her right off the bat, I was like, oh, I want Gouda and I want, you know, I want roast beef and pastrami and ham. And then I don't know if you remember, do you remember what you told me when you asked me about that? Like, well, what's the layering of the ham? Do you remember what you told me about no. that? So you actually gave me, and this is when I was like, man, my mind was like freaking blown because you were like, okay, well... The, there's different levels of the texture of what of the meat that you're going to eat and the saltiness yeah. and they have to be layered at this way. Yeah. And you were like, this is how it's going to be layered. And then I, my whole thing was like, it was literally having a conversation with you and you kind of giving me that, con you know, like this is the art, how you architecturally build yes. structural integrity and build based on the flavor profiles of a sandwich. I, I remember vaguely, like I did tell you about the saltiness of the meat has to touch whatever, you yep. know, it's just, it's true. Am I right? No, you're absolutely right. It's and then like just your, then, then even the aspect you're like, Hey, we should add, cause my, my sandwich has Gouda cheese has the three, those three meats. And then I put strawberry jelly. I wanted something, I wanted the salty, smoky, sweet, Yum. but then you came back and you're like, well, we should add some onions to it. And I was like, holy moly. And so like, like being able to see that, like, is that kind of one of the thought processes, how you also, when you come up with your different profiles, because obviously as a bad host, I really haven't given you a chance to kind of highlight or talk about some of your sandwiches, but like, because you have such a variety of them. Can you tell you, talk a little bit about where you got your inspirations on some of your most popular sandwiches? For sure. For sure. Um, you know, number one is, Definitely Mama Ling Ling's. That is literally my bread and butter. <laughs> and I like it. I actually love it. It's, it's, that was, um, that's very sentimental to me because when we first came to the country, um, my grandmother Gwen from Kansas told my mother, if you're going to live here in America, you're going to have to learn the American dish. And that American dish is Thanksgiving. So my mother, it took her a couple years to master it, but we were eating Thanksgiving every month. <laughs> so it's kind of funny, but um, I, I guess I've mastered it here. That is very sentimental to me, but it, it's just the quality of it. You know, I'm not just putting the stuffing. There's celery, there's onions, there's corn, there's, you know, seasonings and spices in that. So... It's not a regular and the gravy is so thick and just yeah. unctuous. Um, but it's important when you are building a sandwich. For me, I do like the texture. So the onions would be a, a textural profile, the sweet, the salty. Um, you know, we don't really use a lot of big condiments here. We, we can, but it's not it's not what's making the sandwich. It's really the build and the meat and the vegetables, the freshness of it. You can have a beautifully pressed sandwich and still have the integrity of the vegetables crisp and cold and just fresh and lovely yeah. to offset it. That's the condiment for me. No, I, I get that for sure. I think that's uh, and you, you're right. And all those things together kind of blend together as you chew it and you taste it. Mm -hmm. um, totally get that. Uh, so what's your favorite sandwich? I can't pick a favorite child. <laughs> well, I'm not saying, and I get that because I I get asked this question a lot, so I kind of go that route sometimes too. But is there one as like a child that you ate, um, or that your mom would make you, or anything like that that was like a favorite that you're like, hey, I, when in doubt, I'm always, you know, this is one of the things I always like. I think you're gonna kill me. No, go ahead. All right, it's a uh, provolone, mayo, <laughs> bacon, and turkey. There's nothing wrong with it's that. It's so it's so simple. Yeah. 
but it's so delicious and it just it it would take me back to something that I wish I had growing up it was just you know we grew up with nothing so having that type of sandwich and watching kids have you know a turkey sandwich and here I am with the PBJ it was like wah wah but you know what? I elevated, you know, I took that lemonade and made it in, or no, I took that lemon into the lemonade. Yeah. Now we have a triple decker yeah. PBJ. Yeah. That, and that's actually my daughter's favorite. Uh-huh. That one. Yeah. Bella Bella. She, she loves, absolutely loves that. Uh, the It's usually the spicy Elvis. There's spicy it, Elvis. That's yeah. a fun one. So it's just, um, you know, when we, when we do create our specials, I have to think about the board and how easy is it going to be for them to make it. So everything is well thought out. There's, there can't be more than three parts to making a special. If it's, if it's more than three parts, I can't use it because they don't have the time. They're in the weeds or it's just too much for them to handle. So it has to be boom, 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 done, out. Yeah. What, so for all the people listening that maybe want to start something, um, you know, or they're, you know, I guess... There's always, we'll go with two topics that I'm kind of curious on. One is your thoughts on failure. And two is what are things that you would tell someone who want to start, either start something or are afraid to start something? What, what, what advice would you give them or would you give yourself that? For me, I think it goes kind of hand in hand because you have to be able to accept failure if you start a business that is what will make you stronger or break you. That is, that's a lot of people going, wanting to have a business. Oh, I can have this. I, I want to do that. I have a great concept. It's like, are you okay with failing? You have to ask that and realize that um, that is a possibility. When I opened up UCF, you know, I'm thinking like, oh, this little pom-poms is going to go over to UCF and we're going to have a great time. This was about, what, 10 years ago? totally different than it is now. And I'm going to say that I failed, you know, but it's not a failure. It's a learning lesson. It's just, I, if you didn't learn from it, then you're a failure, I guess. I know that sounds harsh, but you know what I mean? It's you, it, I, I lost the business and, um, I had a, one of the toughest things to this very day is telling 20 kids, Hey, we're closing up shop. And, you know, 2020, I know that people had to do that, but it doesn't make you a failure. You learned from it, you know, and I learned from my mistakes at UCF. It made me much stronger. It made me more cautious. It made me know that I am not invincible. And that's, you know, that's that's what happens. You have to learn. But opening up a business. Be prepared, be prepared to worry, be prepared to not sleep, be prepared you know, this is now your, your spouse. This is your life. You know, your, your partner or your significant others, your mistress at this point, we, I, I know I eat, sleep and breathe what I do. And, um, I'm fortunate enough to have a great, you know, um, foundation with my managers, with my boyfriend that understand, because I know me well enough that I won't compromise. I can't. Yeah, no, and I think that's very important. And I guess for me, one thing that I'm kind of curious about is obviously you're doing something that you love. And, you know, at what point when you start worrying about certain things, does it go from not, you know what I mean? Like where it becomes like something that you love to actually being a job. That's always been like something in my mind that I've always kind of like that juggle where like, oh man, I'm like, I love doing this, but what if this becomes um, my job. And then, and maybe you don't love your job. And then you're like, like if it's forced, correct. Kind of like, uh, when you're feeling kind of forced and I trust me, 15 years in this game, I've felt forced quite a few times. It's really, you know, you pick it up, you do it because people enjoy it. I think that, um, and it's okay to take a hiatus. It's okay. Um, I learned the hard way on that one. I just go, 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 let's create, let's do, do, do. And it just was too much. Now at, you know, the golden, the golden years of pom poms, it's a little bit different. It's really when I create, want to create, I will, I don't want to be forced. 
because I think if we're forcing, we just won't do it. You know, we're all rebellious still. Yeah. It's just, it's not in us. No, I totally get that. Yeah. No. And that's something that, um, you I have to recognize it. You, yeah. You can't, it, and it's not because you don't love it. You know, I love my shop. I, like I said, I eat, sleep and breathe this. I have mouths that I'm accounted for that I take it very seriously. So it's okay for me to step back for however long I need, whether it's one day, one week. I know I can't do a month, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, um, it's okay. Take the time that you need because you know you love the product. I know I love my product. Yeah. It's okay. What, um, so one of the things that I find very interesting and, and I brought it up earlier was um, how important you find it is to support local community and community. Um, and one of the great examples is obviously inside your shop when you, when you come in and you look beside seeing, you know, the things that I automatically, I can tell you is you will see just because as you should, um, displays of all the different accomplishments and accolades for, you know, making great sandwiches. But what I really, I guess, predominantly, there's a lot of local art. And I also know that you have like a huge shelf that's full of desserts that are from local um, dessert and, you know, local shops. Tell me a little bit about what made you decide to kind of go that route and the importance of supporting um, other small businesses and incorporating them into your business. You know, the community is our second family. It's um, it's really important that, you know, a lot of if, if I were to mentor anybody that wants to open up a restaurant, I always tell them get involved in charity. They will help you through thick and thin. I know during uh, COVID 2020, if it wasn't for my community, I know I could not be here. That is a fact. Um, so I'm very thankful and grateful for that. And I, it, you, you want to go into charities that you believe in, you know, and when we, the day, I guess the, our anniversary, we always do a charity and that's me giving back. Last year, we did um, 15 days of giveaways. One of the charities that I chose to do was um, Second Harvest. Mm -hmm. 15%, you know, all that. And I just received, I guess like last week, I got a, a thank you card saying that we fed 1,300 people. 1,300 meals. Yeah. That's, in, that's just incredible. So it makes you feel good. Mm hmm you know, it makes you feel good that you're giving back. But I, not only do I do that one, but I, I stay within this realm of independent artists that are um, either, I guess, kind of like drag queens. <laughs> you know, is I, I, I do a lot of charity, all different yeah. types. <laughs> hey, everybody. I mean, the art is amazing. That's one of my favorite parts is because. It also, I mean, obviously, if you think about it, it also changes the decor of your of your of your place because it's got new something new every time you walk in. So Different I think vibe, that's yeah. and you can buy it, which is the other great thing. So you're kind of supporting. So I, I definitely, um, it's definitely one of my favorite things about it. And I've also loved the, seeing the evolution of how your how your shop your you know your spot has has grown um, as well as evolution. I also know that you're at other locations. Um, you know, I know you have a partnership or you've kind of partnered with Finn Henry's, um, as well. So like, how does, you know, is that kind of, and obviously because, you know, you kind of, there, there needs to be growth as you start growing and, and developing, um, and expanding your, your business. When, um, during the pandemic, I, uh, a few of the bars reached out to me because it was just so chaotic that nobody knew the rules. Nobody knew what was going on, but they knew that they needed food. So I did uh, Savoy, and we worked with Finn Henry's for, for a long time. We just ended our commitment with them about two weeks ago, about that time. And, you know, you have to, again, you, it goes, you have to be part of the community, yeah. not just give back, but be part of it, yeah. you know, be part of what, how can I help you? You know, we're here to build bridges and not burn them. There's enough of that going on naturally. Yeah. So, you know, doing pop-ups um, are important. That's kind of collaborations and pop-ups is what really helped me get through the 2020. Because if you look on the outside, I don't have a very nice outdoor seating 
it's um you have to be creative you mm -hmm. have to do whatever it takes yeah the so I, and a few little things because obviously my lunch break is ending soon so um i've, I've always been intrigued by um you know you kind of you're in a posi you're in a you're currently in a location the milk district which has gone through an evolution um you know pretty much 15 years ago it was you and beefy king were pretty much the two um, now you've kind of had, um, you know, you've, you've have a community around you that has a lot of other sandwich shops. How, how does it work with competition? Like, what are your thoughts on that? Like on, on that aspect of it? Because one of the things that I, I know is that you guys are all very supportive being in the milk district and you're kind of like, Hey, one family milk district. But I also know that you're going to have competition in any business. Mm -hmm. um, you know, how do you, how do you, you know, what, what are your thoughts? How, how do you deal with it? What, do, you know, what, give me some insight there. I think, uh, you know, is it competition? Yes, like you said, but it's a healthy competition, meaning there's a healthy relationship between all the owners. You know, I'm not going to ever say anything um, negative about them because number one there's nothing to say negative you know we're all we're all business owners and we all have mouths to feed yeah. so I don't, I'm not going to trash talk anybody I, if anything more supportive like hey welcome to the neighborhood if you need anything you let me know but you know coming I know that like you know badass John he, him and I are great yeah. I, I call him the sandwich king he yeah. calls me the queen it's, yeah. it's a love love yeah and he's doing something so different than I'm doing. I'm a cold kitchen. A lot of people don't realize, like, I don't have an oven back here. I don't have a fry later. I don't have that. This is strictly all, you know, a cold kitchen. He's got a hot kitchen. You know, he could do a lot more stuff than I can um, with protein. So it is what it is. And I love him. I do, I do say... If you are going to come to the milk dr district and open up a sandwich place, you better have your game on. There's for sure. It's just, it's for sure. There's a lot of great contenders here. Correct. And I think, and I think to me, one of the big things, cause I, and even in my world with, when it comes to t-shirts, um, you know, and different people buying clothes and stuff like that. One of the big things that I've always looked at it is, Hey, I'm, I want us all to grow and there's, and there should be no competition for that because at the end of the day, you guys are all very specific and different flavors. And yeah. just like you are with like how my clothing brand is different than others, um, you know, and sometimes you may feel like you want a sandwich shirt and sometimes you may feel you want something else, um, you know, and it just really comes down to what you actually like and what you're craving. Um, and a lot of times when I get asked that question, a lot of times it's like, well, where's your favorite sandwich shop in Orlando? My first question usually is, what are you craving? Yeah, because sure. I'm not going to tell you to go somewhere that's not going to have what it is. It all really comes down to what you're actually wanting and craving. Yeah. Um, so, no, I think that's 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 definitely a great thing. I also love the fact that I think that um, even though you're kind of, you know, you kind of want everyone to be successful, that kind of that that comp not really competition, but you also does help you kind of make you want to get to another level or at least kind of keep you up. It's always like it's competition's healthy. Yes. Um, you know, and is kind of how I look at it. Um, whether you're, whether, you, you know, you're, you, you're, you could be allies and at the same time be competitive and try to make each other better. Absolutely. Um, get, and bring your A game. I mean, like, I'm not going to lie. I, I always look at, you know, my neighbors and what they're doing. And I'm like, I get inspired. Yeah. I, I think that I look at that as like, that's lovely. Yeah. Look at that melt. Yeah. And then here I am like, oh, I need a melt that looks just like Beefy King's melt, you know. <laughs> so it's just the it's I, I get inspired by a lot of little different things. I get inspired yeah. by color, color combinations. Um, right now I'm I'm on the soup kick. So I'm I'm making a lot of soups now. But soup goes great with sandwiches. I think so. Espe you know, I'm, and listen, I will tell you, I am not a. I do not like mac and cheese. I am not a mac and cheese person or really? aficionado, mm -hmm. but the but I always get your mac yeah. and your spicy mac and your spicy turkey yeah. mac and cheese. I always get it. Um, it's just one of those things that I just do. My wife, obviously, she's huge when it comes to that. Um, but yeah, that's one of those things where I kind of just you know. But yes, yeah, soups. Your tomato bisque with like your your usually do like a Monday special where Monday. it's like a grilled mm -hmm. cheese and a and a soup phenomenal um so yeah definitely definitely great great stuff um few minutes left what um 
you know, how can people follow you? Um, and do you have any message or anything for anyone? You know, open floor. I give you I give you open floor for anything that you want to talk about. Awesome. Well, we're open till 4 a.m. on Fridays and Saturdays now. Um, we do have shrimp grits on Friday night only. Um, check us out on Pom Pom's Tea House. That's on IG, also on Facebook. Um, check out some specials that we're going to be running. I'm going to, you know... I'm going to have a couple of collaborations coming up that is not sandwich related. <laughs> wow. So I'm excited about that one. I, I'm excited about that as well. Can't wait to hear more about that and hear and see that, especially mm-hmm. on social media. Well, that's our show for today. Thank you so much for Pom for being on and having lunch with me. Um, definitely make sure to check it out. If you're in Orlando, listen, I know Mickey Mouse is great. Take a drive, go down to the Milk District, <laughs> check out Palm and check out all the, some of the great restaurants here in the area um, and definitely go out and support. Um, if you enjoyed the show, definitely make sure to subscribe, you know, give the stars, do whatever you need to do. Buy Tell t-shirt. your friends. Um, and if you want to support me, obviously check out my brand, Deli Fresh Threads. Yes. Um, do some shopping. Tell your friends. Um, thank you so much. Until next time, keep eating sandwiches and follow your passion. Thanks, guys. Thank you.